Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted. This is episode 745. I'm Kevin Coulson, and I'm here with Susie Leaf of the Anglican Futures. All right, Susie, I want to welcome you to the program, and we're going to talk a little bit about Lambeth 2022, because you happen to be on site. Uh, you have a press pass, and you're going to be feeding us some information this week, and we really, really appreciate that. Um, but in our introduction, people pretty want to, uh, who's this new face? So let's tell people about who you are, Susie. <laughs> uh, hi, um, my name's Susie Leaf. I'm uh, in England. I am... Um, uh, the director of a charity called Anglican Futures, who offer pastoral and practical support to faithful Anglicans. I've worked with GAFCON in the past. Um, I've worked uh, with Reform in the past. Um, I used to be on General Synod of the Church of England, um, mm. but now um, uh, I'm now a freelance journalist at the Lambeth Conference. Okay. Well, you've had the opportunity to attend a couple of the press conferences. One with, uh, I call it the, the Battle of Two Justins here, one with the Global South and one with Justin Welby. And there is a stark contrast between the two, and I thought we could talk a little bit about that. First, let's talk about the, uh, the Lambeth pressers uh, and how they're going. Okay. We've just had one. So we, mm -hmm. had a, we had a sort of media drinks party last night where Justin Welby spoke to us and, and, and chatted to us. And then this morning we had um, the first press briefing uh, and conference. So it was organised. It was it was quite smooth, uh, but it really felt like you were listening to a group of people who were quite defensive, quite um, concerned about what was going on, and were selling a vision of the Anglican future in terms of the Anglican Communion, where. People would be working together, but not um, necessarily believing the same things mm -hmm. and seeking to meet the physical needs of the world. Um, so we've had the news conference uh, with Lambeth. We've had the Global South news conference. And we learned today that uh, the Global South has asked their participating bishops not to go to Eucharist at the opening ceremony. Um, do you think Lambeth was surprised by this announcement? I think Lambeth may have been surprised. I think it's something that isn't so much a plan, but as something that is pretty organic. I think that there was a Eucharist service um, this, this not yesterday morning or this morning, and um, several bishops were were just surprised. And I think there was um, it was a it was a natural response from bishops mm -hmm. of the Global South. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you've agreed to record almost daily with us a little five-minute debriefs about what's happening over in Lambeth. Um, if you're watching Twitter, you would think that 90% uh, of the Anglican Communion is aghast uh, by this resolution, Lambeth 110. And I kind of want to let people know that uh, the Africans and the Global South and the uh, people from Asia are not on Twitter. They're not there to defend all these comments. And, right. the, and the vast majority of Lambeth uh, still agrees and does reaffirm Lambeth 110. I, am I correct in that understanding? I, absolutely. I mean, even with a third of the bishops um, from the Global South not, not present at, mm -hmm. um, at Lambeth, there are still um, hundreds, I think they think probably well over 200 bishops there who are um, who represent seventy five percent of the Anglican Communion, and who are um, thoroughly Orthodox and are just waiting for their opportunity to be able to speak and to be heard. Um, I think they were somewhat surprised um, that people chatting on Twitter could get a call changed. Yeah, and I was surprised too, um, but it wasn't just getting it changed there was a, a a big vitriol you know almost the the level of hatred going on get the opposite of the homophobia the the uh gospel phobia um or scripture phobia mm -hmm. going on in twitter and it, it was interesting to watch because the quickness and swiftness of which lambeth changed their mind about the the preamble 
uh, that all happened within hours after the what what they were watching on Lambeth and Lambeth calls. Yeah. Um, were you surprised how quickly they changed their mind? Well, I was really surprised, and then I was surprised at the press conference this morning when Bishop Tim Thornton told us that that was always part of the process, that it wasn't a reaction, but that they were going to put the calls out, they were going to hear what people had to say about them, and then they were going to make changes to them. Um, well, I read through the calls book, and I didn't see anywhere that you could um, put forward what you felt uh, before the conference started. So I think that's you know quite a surprise, really. As, as well, I think it was Archbishop Bardi said this morning, we were given surprise. we were given a printed book, which yeah. had the words of the calls. Sorry. No, you keep talking. I, I was just giving a reaction. Okay, sorry. All right, sorry. Just yes, Justin Bardi. He said we were given a printed book with the calls when we arrived, and then, uh, you know, the, the, the half an hour later, we were told that 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 printed book was wrong and that it was being changed. Um, that came as a bit of a surprise to them. I think the surprise was they were not given a chance to offer their opinion. Twitter was where the only opinions were That's being right. offered. And so nobody went up to Justin and said, what do you think about uh, the calls book? Um, and that's going to be the problem is how quickly can the Global South and the Orthodox bishops uh, reply to what's going on within Lambeth to get their message across? Because okay. Lambeth isn't looking for face-to-face -face yeah. conversation. They're looking for Twitter conversations. Which is why it was great to have a, a press conference today um, from the Global South Fellowship mm -hmm banking churches because they were able to say what they wanted to say in a way in the way that they wanted to say it mm -hmm. um, and that was really positive well Susie I want to thank you for your time we did a quick 10 minute interview we're going to try and do this daily as news occurs and uh, it's really great to have somebody on the ground there saving me from the heat wave you're saving me for paying the expense of hotel bills. <laughs> You're saving me from sitting on the shuttles going back and forth around Kent University. Um, you're doing that all for uh, uh, Anglican Futures and for Anglican TV. We really appreciate that. Great. No Great. problem. See you soon. <laughs> God bless.